Oke. Okay. Hey guys, it's your girl Tia and I'm back with a vengeance. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about why I quit Sephora. Firstly, let me tell you, I've had a lot of jobs. Um, there is a reason why I change jobs so often. I'm gonna do a video and tell you guys why I had so much jobs. One of those jobs happened to be Sephora. It sounds like a dream job, and it was. And I'm sure a lot of girls are like, oh my God, Sephora, girl, you lucky. Oh my God, makeup. Like, but certain things are just not worth it. I'll tell you that right now. So a year and a half ago, I moved to Toronto, Ontario. Um, I went to a job fair and I applied for quite a few jobs. Of course, Mac and Sephora were one because as you guys know, I love makeup. I've been doing makeup for a while. I got a response from both of them and I was ecstatic, but I had a decision to make. It was either Mac or Sephora. Mac was basically telling me, you know, you gotta do a video interview, a phone interview, a face-to-face -face interview. I said, am I applying to fly Donald Trump or something? <laughs> I'm putting lipstick on people. Why do I have to do so much damn interviews? I was like, you know what? They're doing the most. I went to Sephora. I did a phone interview with Sephora and then they called me back the next day to set a date to do um, like a mannequin interview where I bring somebody and I have to do her makeup for them. Day and night makeup. Um, I mean, I think Sephora would have been my initial pick anyways because of the amount of things there and brands, whereas Mac only has Mac, right? So Sephora was probably gonna be my first pick anyways. The next day I brought my girl, did her, her day makeup, day to night makeup. Um, basically they give you a tray and you have to pick whatever you want in the store to use on your model's face. Um, did her makeup, it was pretty. They're literally watching you do your model's makeup, watching everything you do, where you put your hands on the person's face, how you hold a brush, how much pressure you put, they watch everything. So if you're trying to get a job as Sephora, which <laughs> I tell you right now, don't do it. But if you're trying to get a job at Sephora and you can handle everything I'm about to tell you, then just take note that this is what's gonna happen. But because I already freelance makeup, um, here in, Mo in Montreal and in Toronto, which means I work for myself. I do people's makeup on call. Like I already knew all that, so I was kind of good with where it came to that. She said I had to hold conversation with the customer while I'm doing her makeup. Ain't nobody got time for that. I'm trying to do your makeup. You're trying to look good. You need me to concentrate on your makeup, not on what you ate last night for dinner. But I guess that's what they like. They like you conversating with the customer. I personally, going to Sephora and having them test makeup on my face or do my makeup, I don't want you talking to me because I need my face to be still so you can do it properly. Because if it's not done properly, we're going to have a problem. So, I tried just for the sake of getting the job to talk to her while I was doing her makeup, but it's my model. I already know her. I know what she ate last night for dinner. I know she doesn't have kids and I know what color she wears on her face. So what, what am I talking to her, to her about? It was just pointless to me, but whatever, I did it. A couple days later, they called me, got the job. I was so excited. It, it's about to be certified. Before I could even step foot into the store, there was a two week training. You would think the training would be, you know, practicing makeup and stuff like that. No, no, we get up early in the morning go to this big corporate office place and there's all of us in a big room and a few Sephora teachers, I guess. And we're talking about the history of Sephora and how the name Sephora came from some goddess Sephora or something or somebody from the Bible or some shit like that. I don't care. Like, okay, cool. it's cool to know. Like, I never knew where the word Sephora came from. Like, I mean, I didn't think I had to, to do somebody's makeup, but, um, Okay, they're giving us the history behind the Sephora and what they expect from us, which is totally understandable. And um, their standards and uniform and a big booklet of things to read. I went, sucked it up, 
in the morning. Right in the middle of the training session, maybe a week, or a couple days into the training, they called me and they're like, you don't have to go to training anymore. Just come on in and work. I go to work the first day. Um, the uniform is typically, they have their own black uniform with a red stripe. I'm sure everybody knows that. That's only when you become, I guess, official. Within, I guess, a year of working there, you get that uniform, which is so stupid to me, but okay. Um, within like a year of working there, you get that uniform. Until then, you're wearing all black. That's kind of separation to me, which I don't see why, but I mean, I'm like, okay, sure, fine, all black. So I'm the new girl, you know, everybody's been the new girl at work before. So we all know how that is, you know, you have to warm up to people and I personally, unfortunately, I don't like new, <laughs> new friends. I don't have new friends. I don't like that, but I have to be social. I'm a very social person, but to call you a friend and to have you around more than once, that's rare. So there's all these stush, cause y'all already know, working at Sephora, working at Mac, the girls are very standoffish. Let's say that for better wording. They're standoffish. Okay, cool. First couple of days, I wasn't on the floor. Uh, I was in training, physical training this time. So all the new girls basically had our manager and she was like our teacher and we had like a big table and makeup on it and they're basically teaching us certain things that I, I am gonna admit, I did learn certain things because <laughs> what is primer? <laughs> I'm sorry, even today I don't use primer. I just don't see any difference, personally. I've tried it, it doesn't work for me, so I just don't use primer. But anyways, I learned certain things about different primers, matte, glossy, the variety of stuff that they have in the store, I learned about that and what's different and stuff like that. So we practiced on each other and yeah, it was pretty fun. Um, I That's when I started to sense a little bit of attitude from, I guess, the senior workers or the girls that have been there for a while and you know they see the new girls and they're like mm. I started to sense a little attitude but that's obviously normal because of course they're gonna feel like they're more than you they've been there longer they see new face and they're like okay you know she wants to take our shifts but it's whatever that's at every workplace when I started to work now the next week let me tell you I had six to eight to twelve hour shifts okay and I could work a 12 hour shift and not one of these females, not one, would have a thing to say to me. I'm not begging friend and I'm not begging conversation. But as a female, I've been the new girl and I've been the senior worker and we all need to help each other out. Like you would think in a store full of females that we'd be closer more prone to help each other, you know, advice, stuff like that. That's how I am, that's how I grew, that's how I was taught to be, you know, help people. You know what I'm saying? Nope. Not one girl ever helped me, not one girl ever offered help, not one girl ever gave me advice. They literally want to see you F up, okay? Just so they could look better. We had walkie talkies. The only thing I'm hearing in my freaking ears is oh i just sold this and i just sold that so like what the hell i said half an hour ago somebody's waiting at color for you instead of going and helping whoever's waiting at color instead of using the headphones to help customers which what is what they're for you're using it to basically let the managers know on the low that you just sold this you just sold that shut up they were just they were annoying and they were unhelpful like i could literally ask them for help and be they'd be looking at me like like why are you asking me for help like i don't know when they fully know you know sometimes i do it on purpose literally ask them things i already know just to hear them say they don't know when i know they know and i'm like you <laughs> okay there was literally two girls maybe that i could say yeah they're cool but they were new girls, so of course they're cool. There was not one girl who already worked there that was cool, easy going, nice to talk. They're all fake, fake, all of them. They see you, you come for your shift, they see you, 
and then for the next 12 hours even if you're working with them for example i was in color which is doing makeup basically selling makeup if you're working with them in color they're not you're not there's no conversation you guys walk by each other like nothing and i know for a fact that is not what sephora wants or it's not what they're supposed to want anyways but sephora if you're watching this this is what's going on and this is toronto yorkdale sephora i'm not holding back and i'm not sugarcoating anything i'm telling you my exact experience where that experience was because i don't know if all sephora's are like that if i had maybe transferred to another one they could have been great they could have been nice kind easygoing nice to teach easy to learn from they could have been it, it could have been just that sephora i don't know but this is what's going on in this sephora i'm telling you guys like i didn't like it at all and that was my dream job and it just where i rather not have a job i did have another job at the time so it was very easy for me to quit but even if i didn't have another job probably would have quit anyways because i was like no i'm not taking this it's ridiculous unkind senior workers eight to twelve hour shifts with no communication with anybody like you're a ghost just working i felt like i, I to ask for help was some was me doing something wrong which is so wrong in the workplace you should never feel a way about asking for help or if asking if you're doing something wrong you shouldn't feel bad about doing these things and that's how i knew like i'm not comfortable here like it's so crazy and the other job that i had was at a hair store and it was bare black girls working in there and you already know the attitude was there in the beginning okay but we warmed up to each other and now still now even if i'm not working there now we're like a big happy family okay at the hair store even if i'm not working there anymore and i did not feel like that at sephora and to be very honest i was there for maybe like what two months two or i was there for like two months and it was not getting any better and then there's the beautiful ignorant DICs DICs are basically managers in charge at the moment so they switch DICs during shifts and there were two that specifically stood out to me ass holes okay one was a black girl and the other one was just a weird gothic looking girl anyways I try to like them I always try to like people even if my spirit doesn't connect with somebody you know when you meet somebody you're like mm, don't know what it is just don't like their vibe that's what it was I tried I'm like okay you know what it's a black girl in charge I love that and of such a big corporation I love it like big ups to you like I want to like this girl but <laughs> Some black people, I'm saying black people because I only know about black people, but some black people, when you give them too much power, they start to smell their shit and it smells good to them. This girl, you could tell, was in charge for a while and she knew it and she wanted everybody to know it. I'm the boss, talks to me, talk to me nice. Like, that's just how she was and I didn't like it. You have a stink attitude. You're the reason why I don't want to come to work. My girl was in charge of making the schedule. She messed up. She made the schedule and didn't give it to me yet. She didn't give me the schedule. She didn't give me the website to go and check the schedule. So basically this was the first week I was working and I didn't know when I was working. So what am I gonna do? Go in every day and say, hey, am I working today? No, I'm gonna stay home. When you call me for work, I come in to work. My girl calls me and she was like, um, you didn't come in for your shift and so on and so on. And I'm like, what shift? I wasn't given a schedule nor did you call me literally if your if your work is supposed to be in work and they don't come in what are you gonna do twiddle your thumbs and wait for them to come in no you're gonna call and be like hey uh are you not coming into work why why like why are you not here you didn't call me you didn't give me a schedule and you didn't call me i'm new i'm supposed to be the one not knowing what's going on you're the manager you're supposed to know what i want like what do you mean tell me how my girl gave me a strike for not coming into work when i didn't even know how to shift yeah i take complete responsibility for not coming into work but as my manager and my lead aren't you supposed to be responsible for giving me my schedule okay that's my strike one apparently another day i came into work and again i'm new 
I don't know what routine they have or what I'm, I know to do what they told me to do, what they taught me to do, that is what I'm doing. If you don't say, when you come into work, make sure you hammer the nail, I'm gonna come into work and start working. I'm not gonna hammer the nail. Came into work, mind you, I was late. I called like they told me to do. They said, if you're going to be late or anything or absent, make sure you call and just let us know. I said, sure, of course. I was gonna be late, maybe five minutes. I called, I let them know. She said, sure, fine, no problem. I said, thank you. My, this is a different this is a different DIC. When I had called, a different DIC was in charge. She said, sure, no problem. Came into work. I guess they switched DICs. I don't know that, I wasn't there. But when I went in, and I don't know nobody by name. I just know it wasn't the black girl because we all know I already knew her. But I don't know who I was on the phone with. All I knew was with, I asked to speak to a DIC and I spoke to a DIC and told them I was gonna be five minutes late. She said, sure, fine. Came in there, took off my clothes, punched in, went to work. Get a call and intercom saying, hey, Latia, can you come to the back, please? Come to the back now. Of course, the black girl is there waiting for me. <laughs> Sitting in her throne like, what's up? Like, she's ready to war me. And I'm like, okay. She's like, have a seat. Closes the door, all kind of thing. Like, like my girl had another DIC there with her. So basically, two DICs that are standing there. Like, I'm like, did I, did I do something wrong? Like, that I teeth? <laughs> Cause I don't remember teeth in that. So why are there two DICs, one standing on one, one sitting, hands on, on hip, like, what's going on? So my girl says, you know, Tia, I don't think you really know how we do things around here. And I'm just like, considering I've only been here, um, what, a week and a half? No, I don't know yet how you guys do things around here. I'm still learning. Okay. She said, we have a standard, da, da, da. and she gave that long speech about us as a Sephora people. Like it's a fucking religion. Anyways, gave her speech and then was like, you already have one strike. And I was like, um, you mean when you messed up my schedule? That's the strike you're talking about? She gave me like a smirk like, she said, you were late today. I said, yeah. She said, did you talk to anybody? I said, yeah. She's like, who did you talk to? I'm like, I don't know, a DIC, like I'm supposed to. I called and I spoke to a DIC. Do you know which DIC? I said, no, I don't know which DIC. She said, okay. Well, nobody spoke to me. And I was like, okay. You came in, you punched in, and you went straight to work. I'm trying to figure out what part of what you just said is wrong. <laughs> is that not what I'm being paid to do come to work so she's like yeah but um you didn't come and talk to me when you came in since when do i have to talk to you when i come in i've been working for almost two weeks now and not once have i ever come in and spoken to your highness so i don't know when did that rule change where i have to not speak to you before i start working she's like well you called in and said you're gonna be late and you came and you punched in and you just went straight on the floor. You have to come to talk to me next time when you reach. Okay, um, when were you planning to tell me this? Because I went to three whole weeks of training and I wasn't told anything about talking to you specifically um, when I'm late and I need to come in, which is not a problem. I'll do what I have to do. If what you tell me that I have to do, I'll do it. But. You know, as my manager, you need to tell me this in advance, not just when I mess up, you know, to avoid the strikes. My girl just went on to saying, um, okay, so basically what I'm trying to tell you is this is your second strike. And I brought another DIC here just to let you know that one more strike and we're going to have to let you go. <laughs> my girl, look, I had it in me to be like, let me do one better for you. I quit. Mama didn't raise no quitter, so I sucked it up and I said, all right. But the way I said, all right, I know she kind of felt like this girl's gonna be trouble now because I definitely wasn't trouble when I started. I was an angel. But the way I said, all right, it was like, all right, my turn. And I am kind of petty like that. So I could see she was like, oh God, this is gonna be a problem. Got up and I just went to go do my work. Yo, my girl was giving me attitude for the next two weeks and 
all kind of looks and you could tell when somebody's picking you out and it sucks that it had to be the black girl you're the only black girl in charge and you picking on the black girl <laughs> the other DIC this is my favorite part <laughs> okay this is why it's good to have notes guys so basically we had to wear socks logically when you're wearing flats all females know you don't wear socks with flats so I didn't wear socks with my flats I was not aware that we weren't allowed to not wear socks we had to wear socks at all times my toes weren't out my feet weren't out but okay whatever sure the shoes I was wearing you couldn't tell that I wasn't wearing socks like you'd really have to like to see I wasn't wearing socks because it was literally a full shoe just no socks so there's like this much of my skin showing I was wearing pants so the fact that she even saw I wearing bell bottom pants like the pants that are out so it's covering my whole foot so the fact that she even saw that I was like okay well that's what I'm telling you guys the woman was studying me fam like she didn't like me and I was like okay she comes to me literally pulls me out and says um you're not wearing any socks you have to be wearing socks I'm like okay so what do you want me to do like and have socks like everybody knows Yorkdale's not the kind of mall you go for socks there's no dollar store around the corner so I was like okay um what do you want me to do she said well you have to go buy some socks what if I was broke? What if I didn't have any money? Are you going to pay for that? Or luckily I'm not. Um, I went to go look for socks. I'm like, okay, well, sure, fine. I'll go look for socks. She says, oh, and by the way, you looking for the socks, that's gonna be your break. Mind you, I only had a 15 minute break. Yorkdale's a big mall. Just for me to get to the other end and back, not even back. Just for me to get to at the end is 15 minutes. How did she expect me to find socks? Buy socks. Come back in 15 minutes. It took me well half an hour to even find socks. And do you know how much them bitches cost? They were like freaking 15 bucks for a pair of socks. One pair of socks was like a good 16 bucks and change. There was no store that sells socks. Not any old socks. It had to be black socks. Black socks. I went to Forever 21. No black socks. All kind of socks. No black socks. I went to Aldo. Aldo Accessories. No black socks. This is a high-end mall. They sell Gucci and freaking Louis Vuitton and Chanel. Where the hell am I finding socks? So when I finally found a pair of socks for like 15, 16 bucks, which pissed me the hell off already as it is. It took me half an hour to find them and get back to work. Got back to work and she was like, oh, you took um, a half an hour break instead of a 15. I told her straight up, just, just send me home. Like, I'm so fed up. <laughs> I'm so fed up. I'm like, it's Yorkdale Mall. It's not easy to find freaking black socks here. So I'm sorry if it took me half an hour. I just never thought I'd be using my break to find in socks that's where this one started to cross me another thing i didn't like was um they rushed our work now for the price that we are paying at sephora you would think we would get our money's worth okay people book us for mini makeovers and full makeovers i understand sephora gets crowded all the time especially at yorkdale but to tell me I only have 10 minutes with a customer doing their makeup, my eyebrows don't even take 10 minutes. They take more than that. So how am I doing somebody's makeup in 10 minutes, counseling them on what to use and what not to use? And realistically, when you get comfortable with a worker, you obviously stick to that worker and want that worker's help for everything. Somebody could ask me for help for lipstick and then they're like yeah I like this girl she knows what she's talking about I want help with foundation am I might supposed to say sorry our 15 minutes is up no why am I rushing my work to stick to your schedule instead of making my customers happy 
I'm it's, it's beyond me I don't understand is this time management or customer service all these are reasons I quit Sephora it is not worth it to be singled out disrespected bullied by your employer or your employees it's not worth it okay and I much rather quit a job even if I loved it than to go to jail because I'm telling you right now if any one of those girls were to try me <laughs> and I'm pretty sure oh I hope that if I was to go to another Sephora and work there it would have been better I don't know if it was just that one and the girls there were just <sighs> but they gotta do better man they gotta do better last thing I'm gonna say is I had bought something there obviously I'm a worker I get discount I bought something while I was working there and I don't remember what happened to it or maybe my shape my color changed or something like that after a vacation but I carried it back to exchange it not for refund exchange looked at me and said oh you're gonna have to pay the difference because when you bought this you were working here excuse me you're trying to tell me my good up employee discount I have to now pay the balance for an exchange I could have made a scene but honestly I just wanted nothing to do with this place take your damn discount fam like I don't care I hope this video helps whoever wants to work at Sephora or maybe you have an interview coming up do your research before you, you get any further whether it's you know talking to some of the girls there feeling them out you know you know who's real and who's fake and how you're your your vibe is gonna be in there just by talking to the girls let them know like hey yeah I'm gonna be working here next week you know and see their reaction their reaction alone will tell you okay you know what I'm gonna have problems here okay because if they go oh my god you can tell who's genuinely happy for you and who's like ugh, you know what you're doing and also my lovely subscribers if you want to know which hair I'm using it's down in my description box on Instagram the name is at cupids underscore lace get you some hair right now I'm wearing whatever. the 28 inches straight No tangling, no shedding, and thick. I'm wearing three bundles on a frontal, and it's nice and thick. You know, like when you get the longer lengths, you're bound to get um, thinner than when you get shorter lengths. But this hair is nice and thick. My lashes are Didi's Mink Lashes on Instagram. If you want to get you some lashes, go on, get you some lashes, girl. Didi's Mink Lashes, I'll leave that in the description box as well. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like this video. Comment underneath if you know anything about working at Sephora, your experience. Subscribe to my channel for more videos and I'll see you guys next time.